thing to the cloud server. Okay, I think we are on the report now. So let's say stop this and let me try to revisit the last time. Okay. Um, please uh, pay attention to this thing. Okay. This is the system that we call the one way slab. The one way slab is generally the system where, you know, the weight of the floor travels in one direction, just like this. So you can see we have the floor system that in this picture, half the weight goes to the beam on the left, and then half of the weight goes to the beam on the right. So it's what the system that we call one way slab. I have never done this before, but I'm going to try in this class to give you a little more idea of the floor system because. For sure, everyone will come back to the floor system again in the design class, which are the reinforced concrete design class and steel design class, because you are going to design the buildings for real. So you need to understand the system. Okay. So um, from this, if I'm going to draw something, if this is the floor system, okay, and let's say, Oh, so uh, not straight. This is the beam supporting the floor. Okay, so I'm drawing exactly like this picture. Uh, sorry, uh, I should uh, change this into the uh, red color so that you can refer to that. Uh, these two beams are the, the red ones in the picture. Okay, now. Um, you see that uh, the symbol or the column, the column is yellow, right? So if, if it's in the drawing, you will see it. it's something that looks like this. Sorry, it's not very uh, clear. I hope you can see it. If you take this off, right? Guys, yeah, it's can. Okay, so that would be the symbol of the column. Okay, um, pardon me, I need to change the color. So you will see something like this in the drawings. The solid uh, square indicates where the column is. Okay, you guys know that already, right? That's why everybody, ah, this is kind of boring. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait until we get into the calculation. Okay, and this primary beam will be something that okay, maybe run along like this. Uh, keep in mind that I don't draw really exactly what you see in the drawings because you will not see the solid line like this. You should see something like the the, the, the dotted line because in real world, you don't see the beams because they are underneath the floor. So these lines, if drawn correctly, should be the dotted line uh, or the official word is the perforated line. Okay. Now the symbol of the floor that you will see is going to be something like this, indicating its direction. Because you are going to place the floor, you know, like this. So we use a symbol like that. But this is a symbol of the one-way slab. Okay. And there are generally two kinds of one-way slab that I can uh, think of. The first is associated with, you know, the uh, fabricated one. You know, for example, like these floors, you can see that they come in pieces, right? The precast concrete or the metal sheet, it's made of metal in the steel structure. So you can say it can be precast concrete, it can be metal sheet or metal deck. I'm oh, sorry, I should say metal deck or metal sheet. Uh, metal deck and metal sheet, they are the same thing, but when you call it metal deck, it means that you're going to pour the concrete on top of it to create a floor. But the metal sheet is the roof. So the, the, the roof that you see anywhere, for example, pardon me, one second. That that you see here, this is a metal sheet. But if you pour concrete on it, the sheet is going to be thicker to, so that it can carry the weight of the concrete itself. So we call that metal deck. Okay. So back here. And another one is called the cast in place concrete. It means that you cast concrete on site. You don't use any 
fabric fabricated uh, stuff. Now, in order to have the one-way slab, you will see that, okay, if uh, we have the, the floor, okay, like this, you know, I, I told you that I would lock the door after I start teaching, right? And I, I'll, I'll do so, but perhaps uh, this is last time. And let it, let it be on the record that for, for folks who are gonna be here, please wear something with the collar and your shop doesn't count, okay? Your shop doesn't count as, as a collar. If you think your shop counts, I'm gonna ask you to take whatever you're wearing to start home, all right? It's not gonna be nice for later, right? I, mean, I can't do that, can I? Anyway, um, if you have the floor, let's say this is the floor, you know, surrounded by the beams, of course. This is uh, especially for concrete. If the ratio of the width to the length, if L over B is greater than two, it's going to be the one way slab. That means even though it's a cast in place, the weight distribution of this slab is going to be just like what we have here. Half go to the left, half go to the right. If the ratio of this cast in place slab is, is greater than two, uh, two to one or two, okay? You will, you will have this more in the reinforced concrete class. Any question? Now, another one is of course that we call two-way slab. Two-way slab is going to be the cast in place with this ratio L over B less than two. That means if, if, if you run into something like this, the, oh, okay, sorry, not very straight. The weight distribution of the floor is going to be something like this. It gets a little bit more complicated. You will learn how to take care of this in the reinforced concrete class. So this is how we put the load of the floor on to our beam system. Okay. Now keep in mind two things. You guys are taking notes, so I'm just slowing down. But you're going to have to remind me that I say two things because I always forget after after I, I, I talk about the first thing. It's my, it's my nature. Okay? I'm old enough to forget whatever I want to say in the next 10 seconds. So you better hurry a little bit, but I'm not going to you know, force you to, come on, when, when are you going to finish it? Right? Just a tiny little piece of thing. Okay. Okay. So, any any question with this? Any question? You can ask me any question, but you better keep it related to structural analysis. But you can ask me questions about some other things during the break, because some maybe when I start talking about music, movies. Football, it's gonna last forever, okay? So we better keep our topic about the structure for the time being. Any questions? So remember the next time you're gonna to have to wait until the next break, all right? Remember the symbol very well, you know, this symbol indicates how you place your system. You should ask me, not pointing fingers like that. Come on. I've, I have designed quite a number of buildings, you know? I should be able to answer your question, you know? Yeah, but I haven't done any engineering work in the past like four or five years. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So we are okay with that. Now keep in mind about two things. I think I already forgot one. Oh, two, okay. First, the load. Okay, let's say uh, I should add the new page, right? Keep in mind first, as engineers, you are responsible for the load. 
That means you must know how much load you need to put on your floor system. It's your job. Nobody's going to tell you. It's your job. Okay? So we, when we talk about, let's say, we, we are now talking about the beam system. So it's a gravity load, okay? So you, can, you, you should understand the word gravity load, right? It's the load that caused by gravity, of course, which means it's a vertical load. So gravity load. Geez. A gravity load, or you can say the vertical load. Now, please don't be confused if you have, uh, if you if you hear these words again, because I'm telling you now, you can have a date load. It's not the load that is dead; it's the load that its magnitude remains uh, kind of intact throughout the life. Okay, the load, the date load can be, you know. Think about the, the load that doesn't change against time. It's, uh, the definition is in the slide. Oh, that, that, that's not a dead load, is it? It, it can move? Okay. Anyway, it happens. It happens to me all the time. All of a sudden, you drop things in your hand, right? Wait until you are my age and you see maybe you forget where your glasses are and it's on your face. And, you know, sometimes I, 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 I try to wash my face and then I forgot that my glasses were on my face and you know how that felt just wham and then the glasses just on my face with water anyway so date load is the load that you know magnitude kind of uh unchanged you can say that i use another word in the in the, in the hand now so you can say it's a weight of the floor the weight of the beam the weight of the structure so to speak Structure weight. Walls, for example, if you put the walls on, stay there, right? And like this, finishing of the floor. But I'm gonna, sometimes they use another fancy word for those kind of loads, they call super imposed date load. So finishing of your floor, that's my finishing. Let me try to write again. Finishing, okay? What kind of uh, finishing you want to use for your home? If you want to use granite, it's going to be rather heavy, right? If you want to use wooden uh, panels, if you want to use the, the, the heaviest one is marble. Heavy in terms of the load and heavy in terms of the money that you have to pay for it as well. So it's pretty heavy in every way. Okay. So sometimes guys call that super imposed. It's the load that is put on top of your typical date load. So plainly speaking, it's just another date load, but they call it with a fancy word, super imposed date load. So that you know it's a another date load that is not the self weight of the structure. Okay. Any question? Are you, aren't you? Oh, it's pretty exciting. This is what engineers do. Oh, you just, oh no, this is what I dream of at all. I just want to build a house. I don't want to know about this kind of thing at all. Why you keep telling me this? Is that what it is? Maybe, maybe not. So what else can you think? Anything else that you can put on your structure that is the date load? Think about it. You have some kind of piping system underneath, right? Yeah, your, your conduits, sometimes they're called conduits, right? Please uh, pronounce it uh, beautifully, conduits. You know, Thai people pronounce it Pandu. You know? So I don't know who's going to suck what. Pandu. It's horrible. It's conduits, which means a, like a tube system. But sometimes they call the tube system that you put electrical wires inside the, the conduits. Okay? And then you can have piping system for your waste, for your clean water. All kinds of systems are hidden in here. 
that can be considered the superimposed date load. Okay? So when you go out there and try to build your own house, don't forget to include all these kind of loads that your structure has carried. All right? So that's uh, superimposed date load. Okay? Now, um, interesting thing. Let me ask you this. What do you think about the furniture? You think furniture is date load? Ah, think about it. Please think about it. I, I want you to not to just remember things. I want you to think. And once you think, it's in your thinking system longer. It's in your engineering system longer. So you think furniture is a date load? It's not dead. It's alive, right? Yeah, good thinking because we can move the furniture outside the room, right? So it should not be date load. But some furniture may be considered date load. Do you think it's possible? Safety deposit box. Very heavy, right? So let's say you have plenty of money at home. You don't want to move your safety box like every day. It's very heavy. And let's say you have, you're so rich, your safety box is like so big. Or sometimes if you go, I, I think they have it here too, on the fifth floor of uh, the, the office of the president building, they have the special um, kind of safety deposit to keep all the files, all the documents. And that kind of stuff is my, maybe 50% higher than my height. And what you store inside is pretty heavy. So when you are engineers, and you see this, this, this is what they're going to put in the room. You better start thinking about whether or not you should call it a date load or life load. And there are walls, special walls, that call partition. Have you heard of it? That there are walls that can be called partition. That tool can be moved around like a cubicle. So that can be considered not date load because you can move it. So that there, there, there are tiny little things like this. So of course, the second is the live load. This is say <clears throat> magnitude keeps changing. Okay. Uh, folks at home, is my handwriting okay? Oh, you have a problem uh, in the chat. Yeah, live load. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So live load is what we call the occupancy it depends on occupancy generally means how you are going to use the area oh sorry please could you please try to use the uniform universal gesture i thought you were dancing yeah just just, just raise your hand, please. Uh, you know, the chat box is blocking the view. Stop doing things like you're gonna do the Hawaiian dance. Okay, anyway, really just you know, got me using my thinking system very hard. So, for example, school, houses, apartment, hotel, meeting room, or stadium. Uh, hospital, that's how you're going to use a room. How, I should say in formal language, how, oh, sorry, how the area is used. Okay, generally this is governed by LAW law. That means you need to know this. If you fail to abide by this, you're in trouble. Why am I pointing? Okay. So when you move on to this to the design classes in the next semester, 
Remember, you, mu you must be able to find this information by yourself. Okay? So now we know. Good. So that's pretty much it. That topic number one. You are responsible for the law. Topic number two. Oops, step someone still will write. Okay. Yeah, I can take breath. Are we crystal clear with uh, number one? Yes. You should, if you are crystal clear, you should like a very solid, confident, yes. Yeah, not like you're afraid the rest of the world to know that you understand things. Yes, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Okay. So are we ready for number two? Maybe. Number two. Oops, that's a Porsche 911 stuff. Okay. Number two is this. Oops. Okay. Now, it's, why this is bigger? Uh, who cares? Anyway, number two, remember the floor plan. Oops, that's a pan that's uh, used in cooking. Is two dimensional. That's a uh, dimension is S, right? I suppose. Yeah, it looks more familiar. Two dimensions. So I can say your floor system is something that looks like this. Correct? If, if, I, if we try to draw the, the three dimensional uh, uh, aspect of your building. So your floor system will be just like nothing more, nothing less than a flat plane in the in the two dimensional system. You can see there, be, there may be some columns here, there and everywhere, you know, like that. But the floor system, the floor plan itself is two dimensional, which means the floor plan alone cannot help withstand the lateral load. I should change the color. When you have the lateral load coming in from the side, the floor system is parallel with the, the lateral load. So it will not help your building resist the lateral load. That's why we need the, uh, the framing system. The floor plan alone will not be able to give you stability for the entire system. Framing system is therefore needed for you know resisting oh, I think my handwriting is time to go berserk in the first hour lateral load that is the main reason why we need to understand the framing system, okay? <clears throat> um, one more thing you need to know, my handwriting can become very, very bad. If you can't read it, ask me now, because as time goes by, I myself will not be able to read it too. That's how bad it can be. And it happens before. You know, there's a story behind it that uh, I used to ask one of my students for my lecture because I lost my, my original copy. So my, my graduate student handed me his uh, lecture and I asked him, what the heck is this? He said, he didn't know, he just wrote it down. I said, I just told you to ask me in the class, right? And then he couldn't read it. And now I couldn't understand what I wrote before because I couldn't understand what he wrote. So it happens, so 
like this if you if you can't read it now ask me remember let's remember remember the floor let's remember actually that's an r or is a comma remember the floor plan is two-dimensional okay framing system is therefore needed looks like needed needed for resisting lateral load So I think we are now pretty ready today to go into our example, okay? Any question before we start doing some calculation music? No, I'm sorry. It's like, wow, I didn't know how to, handle that it just comes as a surprise sorry better stay away from that it's fine as much as i can okay so uh are we ready now maybe you need you need to take a breath take a breather for 30 seconds maybe you know believe me Speaking with the mask on is very, 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 very tiring because I can't breathe normally. So if you think you're tired, you know, think of myself speaking all the time with the mask on and with the age of 50. <laughs> Woo. Okay. All right. So now could you please uh, get this document ready? Uh, CBE 337 examples. Volume number one, we're going to start looking at the floor system. Okay? Like that. Uh, I, I will go back to, to this page in case uh, some of you still need to write something, but please uh, find this uh, document and uh, open it. Okay? You know, it's uh, before the computer age. That was a fun time, and and we used to have the something called a design guidebook that contains everything. I remember, I I, I still have it in my room. It's called Reno Civil Engineering Guidebook. So it has all kinds of floor where you know you don't know how the weight of the floor is going going onto your beam. For example, I'm not gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna put this on the exercise and homework or the exam, just so you, so that you know that things like this. If you have the floor like this, a triangle floor, can we have that? Of course we can. Architects can, can give us a nightmare anytime they wish, right? So you're gonna have a floor like this. So maybe, okay, you can have, you, you may ask architects, Hey, can we have three beams like this? The architect, the architect may say, oh yeah, maybe, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, you can. So how the weight of the floor is going to be uh, distributed on the beams? The Reynolds civil engineering guidebook will tell you the formula to calculate. Maybe the Lord is going, going like that. Yeah, yeah, there's a formula for that. And then maybe, the architect is a bad movie, has a fight with his girlfriend, so and so. And so. Hey, can we have the beam on the edge? And they say, Why? Why do you want it? You don't want anything in your life. Just get rid of this. So, your floor is just like this now, without the beam on the edge. You can have that too. Yeah, we can, do, we can handle that. And now, oh, maybe, but you have to have a lot of reinforcement around here because the floor is going to sack, right? Anyway, that, so the, the way distribution is going to be different. For example, there are all kinds of stuff in, in that uh, um, design book. So it's, it's a lot of fun. But, you know, then I, I, I thought I was a little bit older than you. I, I was working in the company already. So, wow, we're supposed to have that kind of book, right? In the back of your shelf. So that when people come in and they look at the 
and at the background of your office, you know, all kinds of text look behind you. They start to give you some respect, right? You don't wish to put some manga cartoon animation behind your back in your office. You better put some design guides behind you, right? So that you, you look a little bit more respectable. So yeah, that's what, what my, my office feels like, you know, kind of respectable. But if you ask me, oh, you read all those? Nah, impossible. Just there for decoration. Anyway, so we're ready, right? So let's take a look at the system. Okay. Now, uh, as I have mentioned before, um, this is sort of a miscellaneous floor system. So it's just that much. You know, it's not the entire floor. Um, Say so it gives you something that uh, this is the uh, to support the machine in the factory. So generally, a live load like this, you can uh, perhaps obtain from the machine catalog. So you must know what kind of machine that is going to be put on your structure. If you have that information, you start looking for the weight of the machine itself, what kind of support the machine needs. Maybe it's a live load, maybe it's a point load, whatever. So yeah, I used to design the floor to support the machine with live load much bigger than this because it's a floor for the maintenance. They need to put the machine on the floor if they want to carry the maintenance for the machine, something like that. So let's say this live load is pretty extraordinary. That, that's heavy, 1500, okay? And, uh, and the date load, maybe the, the floor that uh, will be used to support the, the, the equipment itself is also pretty heavy. So that's the load. But please notice one more thing that you guys need to be always aware of is the unit that you work on. You see, this unit, generally the date load and live load uh, come in. Uh, in the form of load per area. So you, you should see it from, from the unit, right? That is a load per area. So that means if you can figure out the tributary width, you multiply this number by the width, you're gonna have the load per length. So that becomes the uniform load that will act on your B. Okay? So now with that much information, we can start working on the uh, the analysis that we need. So now, first first thing, and perhaps the most important thing, the, 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 all the things that you need to do is just to figure out how your structure is going to survive. Okay? Now, um, yeah, I didn't fix that. <clears throat> Generally, this will be your um, secondary beam, B1. You see, with the load putting on it, can you see that? Please stop me right away if you think you missed something. Don't be afraid, okay? This is, if you ask me, it's a very easy stuff. And if some students are gonna make some mistakes, generally it comes from, you know, the, uh, the error in calculating the load. And once your load is wrong, the rest is garbage, correct? So let's say the beam B1 is pretty simple here. It's there to support the floor, correct? And now you can see uh, your information, be, be very careful. Uh, it gives you that this is, um, okay, two meters each. Oh, but not very really straight at all. Yeah, I can do that, right? Yeah. So that's two meters. And that is also uh, two meters, right? So that's two, that's two. So that means, for example, this a beam like this takes half on the left, takes half on the right. Are you with me? So maybe we can try to paint it. like this. And you know, can you believe that? Every year, some students get confused because it's half on the left and it's half on the right. So they end up thinking it's four meters, for example. 
yeah, that you can laugh now because you know when when you are under duress, when you are under pressure in the exam, some thrive, some suffer. For example, you can do something like four plus four equal to sixteen. Yeah, it happened. It happened to me before, you know. Four plus four equal to sixteen, or four multiplied by four equal to eight, something like that. It happened. So be be careful and pay attention to the you know the area of the work that you need to. Don't pay attention to. You, you should pay attention all, all times actually. But let's say. Oh Lord, it's easy. So you you're pretty rash about it, and then you end up using the wrong tributary whip. That's a, that's just about the saddest story that can can happen. Okay, so right here, you can say um, this is. So if, it, if that's two, that's two. So that means this is one. Um, sorry. That's, That's one. one. And that is also one. So, which means the tributary width is in fact two meters. Which is, you know, if you, if you place everything evenly, the spacing of the beam, you see, it's two meters, is in fact the tributary width, right? Simple as that. So is there any question? <clears throat> and then uh, this is a typical typical B one. Okay. Now um, let's say we're gonna move on to see B two. This one is a tough example, really. But not that tough. It, it tells you everything you need to know about the system that we use in the country. Because generally, you see this part is the canopy part, you know, the shade, the shaded area that you need to provide for the building, right? So you, you, we generally don't build columns right at the, that very corner because it, you cannot build the foundation very close to the area that is adjacent to your own area. So that's why you need to, to have some setback. So the foundation itself is gonna be, you know, away from the area that you can use and then you extend this yellow area to increase the area that you can use or to provide a shape. You can look out anywhere, you know, at the back, you see, every building in, in, in countries around the tropical zone area should have this kind of cantilever uh, floor or slab or shade or canopy. First is to give us the shade so that we don't get hit directly by the sunlight. It's very hot. Second, to give us a shade uh, for the rain. So it's, it's a common uh, thing to have here. And third, as I mentioned, you, you need to have a setback because you cannot build a column because the foundation is going to be underneath it. You cannot build a foundation so close to other people's uh, land. There are rules for that. But you can extend you know, your building further out. So that's why we, all have, we, we always have something like this. So let us, because we started off about uh, 940, but maybe because it's, it's going to be a long thing. So tell me, I want to know if you want to have a break now or if you want me to finish the B2 and B3. Uh, um, sorry, what, what are you trying to say? Now? Okay, yeah, that's what I expected. But we still have two minutes left before the break. So let's use it, right? You have two minutes for uh, 1020. Um, <clears throat> The question is, you are engineer, but not yet. You will, right? You will be, right? So it's your job to provide the structure with the support. It's nobody else's job. It's you who need 
to make sure that every structure in this floor plan has support and therefore they're safe because we cannot build the beams by tying them to the balloons, right? We need to provide the support for each and every one of the beam in the floor plan. So before you take the break, I wish that you would look at the beam B2 and because they are not on any columns. So what do you think will become the support of beam B2? And this one as well. That's your job to create the system that these beams can uh, survive and are stable. Your job. Fun, right? I can tell you right now that uh, this is the most fun part in working, you know, trying to come up with the system. Because after, after you have decided what system you're going to use, the rest is just numbers and numbers and numbers and numbers. So this is, this is the part where you, where you can flex your muscles, where, where you can enjoy creating something in the world, you know, where you can, oh, I don't like this. I can shuffle my beams like that, maybe. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's take a break here, 10 minutes, okay? So I'm just gonna stop the record.